when the PIM task force actually designed any of the templates, whether it's the access matrix or anything that you find within the toolkit, they were meant to be basic uh, templates to have a starting point to be able then to develop the tool as you saw fit to uh, within your own boards to uh, complement the processes and policies that you would have within your board. So certainly Garth illustrated two different approaches um, to the access matrix. John spoke of another. And I think as we start working on that individually at our boards, we'll see more renditions as we go forward. That is going to be a living document. It'll, be, it'll go from a dynamic to static dynamic type of document over the process of uh, working through the maturity model in the uh, PIM uh, process. The one thing that Garth noted in the original guidelines that he uh, shared with you this morning was the whole idea about defining roles. And quite frankly, when we put the toolkit together, we had that access matrix, but we didn't take the other step of defining the roles. And so I'm going to touch base on that particular portion. We did, um, the PIM task force did uh, take a small attempt at doing that this past summer. And so with that, I'll just step through a couple of things. So next slide, please. When you're developing PIM roles, Kim mentioned this morning that you should maybe embed that into the uh, job profile, job description as you're moving along. But even if it's a side-by-side -side type of set of documents where you have the job profile and then the PIM roles, there are probably a couple of areas that you should consider in developing the PIM roles. And these were three of the areas that uh, Erica Van Roosmelen from the uh, Halton Catholic District School Board, their chief research officer, did in developing the roles and the examples that I'll share with you in a few minutes. So the whole idea about things to think about. So in your role, what things do you think about in terms of privacy when you're carrying out your day-to-day -day jo job tasks? How do I protect that student information? Should I really be looking at that OSR? I don't necessarily teach that student, but my neighbor in the next room does. You know, where, what are those things that we should think about in that particular thing? Things to do. Kim outlined this morning, when there's a privacy breach, there are certain steps that we should take in containing that privacy breach and then addressing that so that we ensure that we do not, uh, uh, we are able to mitigate and prevent a privacy breach in the future. And then outcomes, what's in it for me? That may be a little bit of a selfish type of question, but I think when I show you the example, you'll understand in terms of, you know, how it works into just building that culture uh, privacy culture on a day-to-day -day basis within your workspace. Erica, in the development of uh, some job descriptions or role descriptions, she provided three examples. And so I'll step you through each one of them. We have a principal example, a teacher example, and a trustee example. And you'll see that as we go through the document, it does cover those three areas that I, I was uh, speaking to earlier. So for an example, you know, as your chief responsibility, your prime responsibility, a principal is the chief instructional leader within the school. And you're ultimately responsible for the privacy and the information management within that school. So you have the responsibility to control the privacy and information confidentiality as accurately as possible. So what are some of the things you think about? How do you and your staff manage private information within your school? what type of private information is collected within your school, and, and several other questions. Things to do. You want to check the records for accuracy to ensure privacy, so that starts with the registration process. When mom and dad bring the student in for their first time to a school, or as you're changing student information, that may change along the way if a student moves or some of their home situation changes. You need to understand and communicate within your staff the different laws that um, uh, Kim highlighted for us this morning, and of course the other element is the Education Act. Uh, we're all responsible at the school level especially, and the board level, to make sure that we adhere to the Education Act and then how the Act complements or supports MNFIPA and PHIPA. <coughs> Provide an environment where uh, you're sensitive to the rights and regulations regarding privacy and information management. That may come to um, having a shred uh, collection point within the school or maybe a shredder in the main office where you can um, destroy those particular paper records appropriately, have a records retention schedule at the school level, and so on. And then what's, what are the outcomes? What's in it for me? As a principal, people have a variety of different um, responsibilities within the school. 
And certainly it's, it's the portion about making sure that the members of your school community uh, understand the, the factors pertaining to privacy uh, within your school community and it's reflected in your record keeping. And you basically take time to build that culture of, of privacy within the organization. And I think first and foremost, when we first started on this PIM journey, it was the whole idea about building a privacy culture within the organization that it really becomes something that you're aware of and you do on a daily basis just as you carry out your other job responsibilities. And then ensuring that the quality of privacy and information management will improve as you grow that culture throughout your school. So now we'll take it on to the teacher um, description. You'll notice it's the same three categories, so I won't necessarily spend uh, some time on, on, on each category. But certainly um, the teacher would have a variety of roles if they're keeping uh, accurate um, attendance information or mark information, yeah, assessment information, that type of thing. That portion me must be timely. Any information that may change with a student, maybe the teacher doesn't have the ability to change the student management system information, but certainly communicating that back to the school secretary, assistant at the school level to ensure that that information is um, available. Who gets to view the private information that you hold for your student? Certainly the parents would, would maybe have the opportunity through parent council or parent teacher nights, information nights, school board members, and the students. Uh, what type of um, impact is there if there's incomplete or inaccurate information? And again, improving the accuracy of private information. So then what can you do in terms of um, um, protecting in information? And it comes through for a variety of different things, checking the records, taking uh, in-service training, understanding the nature of the uh, legislation, uh, following the school district's uh, privacy and policy, uh, privacy and uh, information management po uh, policies and procedures, and just making sure that the uh, private industry information that you do hold is accurate and complete. And then share ideas in terms of, with your counterparts in terms of how you can ensure that you can protect information. And if we scroll down to the last part, what's in it for you. You'll be able to make sound educational decisions for your students. Yeah, that'll be improved because uh, those decisions will be based on accurate private er, information. And you'll be able to improve the student's educational experience because the instructional program will be based on accurate private information. And really, that's what it's all about. We're here for improved student learning. Our business is education. And we need to ensure that we can assist those students in their educational journey to the best of our ability, but also in a safe and secure and um, uh, private management of their information accordingly. Now, the last example we have is for the trustee. And as Garth is bringing that up, um, we, these are only three examples that um, Erica had some summer staff that this past summer do, uh, do for her. We are going to include these examples and hopefully more on the uh, PIM website and uh, then you can uh, pick and choose or kind of develop your roles as you want to go forward. You may take it to a higher level where you would say, okay, people within the IT department, these are your roles and responsibilities. Or you may actually want to take it down to the specific level, like a teacher, principal, superintendent, uh, manager, um, different types of levels. So with this, uh, the trustees um, certainly have the overall responsibility next to the director in terms of making sure that uh, uh, they set policy, the appropriate policy to manage the board and to carry out their operational requirements. So what type of information do they need? Certainly they don't get to the elemental student data, but they certainly will be interested in um, achievement ratings, uh, the number of students we have, just the types of services that a board is providing so that they are able to answer to their communities. Um, how do you know that the records are protected they're accurate and they're private. So are there proper policies set at the board level that will then empower the, the staff throughout the organization to ensure that accuracy as we go, go forward? What do the personnel do in school, in a school, to enter and gather the private information? Things to do. They have to understand what the impact is of privacy within their role uh, as a trustee and how it impacts and affects the funding programs. They also have to allocate the appropriate resources to enable schools to gather and enter that data 
efficiently and uh, ensure that it's private. And uh, for those techie people in the room, that last bullet certainly would agree with us. Uh, Garth, invest in the computer hardware software as a, routu a routine cost of doing business. And I mean, there are many things that are routine cost of business, of, of cost of doing business, but certainly most of us are using an electronic uh, student management system uh, as well as personnel systems. And it certainly needs that, uh, that um, information and infrastructure to be able to carry forward and, and uh, manage the security of our information. And the outcomes. Um, you know, the public is constantly pressuring our trustees for uh, their representation, what are they doing to ensure improved uh, learning for our students. And if the trustees are knowledgeable about privacy and information, they are able to uh, talk about, yes, this is the process we take to ensure that the information we enter for your students is accurate and we keep it private. And by uh, actually improving privacy and information management, uh, it's an investment for the board to really uh, use the resources in a productive way that is accurate and timely and also results in uh, the information to justify why we are providing the programs and uh, securing the, ne the necessary funds moving forward to either introduce new programs or extend programs that we're currently uh, providing to our students. So, as I said, you know, certainly along the way, if your boards choose to develop some other roles, uh, we would, and I'm speaking on behalf of the PIM uh, task force now, we would certainly be um, in inviting you to share those roles with us. We will uh, genericize them a little bit more. Uh, for example, with um, Erica's examples here, we'll remove the board logo and we'll certainly keep the PIM logo on it as we do with our regular toolkit.